today's sermon as we begin, and that topic is keeping your wells unstopped. Keeping your wells unstopped. Genesis chapter 26, verse number 12. And our topic this morning is keeping your wells unstopped. Then Isaac sold in that land. Then Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And received in the same year an hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great. And the man waxed great. And went forward. And went forward. And grew until he became a very great. In order to get a proper appreciation as we walk down through the text, it says Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. Well, go back to verse number one so we can properly appreciate what Isaac did. And there was a famine in the land. And there was a famine in the land. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. So here Isaac was in the midst of a famine, but yet he produced a hundredfold. My Saints, God. it's very encouraging to know that even in the midst of a famine all around you, all right. you can produce a hundredfold. My God, yeah. It's a blessing to know that our pro productivity is not determined on our surroundings Hello. or what, uh, 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 what favor we may have with so-and-so or, 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 or who may be on our side or, 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 or who got our back. Thank the Lord that even in the midst of a famine, you can produce a hundredfold. Away with that idea. So and so don't like me, that's why I'm not going for it. Or so and so don't care for me, that's why I'm not as productive as I should be. Or so, listen, even in the midst of a family, or they're not feeding us like they should feed us, or, or the choir don't sing the song that I really want them to sing, or the sermons are not going forth in the manner that I wanted. Or if all my children were saved, then we would really, in the midst of a family, amen. Oh God, oh God. If you got the favor of God, you can produce a hundredfold. You can reduce. You may say a lot of young people are not on fire for God. Well, my on fire for God is not predicated upon the young people around me, but it's predicated upon my connection with God. Well, a lot of people are raising their children with fire today and teaching them the word of God and holding the principles of God and showing them what the church of God is. I, I, I appreciate what other folk may be doing, but as for me and my house, my God, in the my midst God. of a family, you can have a thriving yeah. church of God home, amen. Right. My God. So here this brother produced a hundredfold. He did not allow his circumstance or situation. We live in the day and age, saints, where there's too many people that are too delicate. There's too many people that are too affected about every little thing around them. Affected by this person and that person and that person and that person. And they're allowing them to affect their productivity. Yes, we will go through things. Yes, there's going to be situations and trials. But these trials should not hinder our productivity with God. Amen. All right, God. All right, bro. So here Isaac produced a hundredfold regardless of the famine that was all around him. Verse 14. For he had possessions of flocks, and possessions of herds, and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. That brother was storing up stuff. You see, in a famine, it, 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 it's, it's, a, uh, it's a bereavement, it's a brevity of, of resources in, in the midst of a famine. Storing up stuff. My God. His brother was storing, but let's be careful. Yeah. If everybody around you discouraged, you come around with some inspiration, it says the Philistines envied him. Well, I don't like so and so. Here they go again. Here they talking this any up. Here, uh, what you up here? That's just a moment. You just said it. You just said it. It's amazing when you ain't got your head down like they do. When you ain't complaining about the service. You ain't complaining about the. See, some crowds you can't get in unless you complain your way in. Alright. You see, you ever heard of the, uh, 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 some games you gotta be initiated in? In order to become a part of some games, you gotta pop a cap in somebody unless you can't be a part of that game. Right. Why? Because when it gets heated, 
They don't want you to turn on them. You got to have some dirt on you. Yes. See, so in order to get in some crowd, in some circles, amen, you got to, amen, you got to throw some dirt on some folks. Now, as long as you throw, as long as you complain, as long as you're murmuring about this and murmuring about, oh, they're complaining, let them on in. They ain't happy either. You happy? You ain't happy either. Come on, you can be a part. Right. But if you got inspiration, my God. if you got joy, my if you got, my God, victory down in your soul, if you're not complaining about everything, my God, some folk will envy you. Yes, Come on and read it. For all the wells which his father's servant had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had stopped and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us. Stop right there. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines, has stopped him up. We want to preach this morning concerning the topic, keeping your well unstopped. One of the great responsibilities of a nation, a territory, or dominion was to keep their wells unstopped and flowing. Yes, sir. No matter what they had to do, or how they had to do it. On. One of the great responsibilities was keep the well unstopped. Regardless of what opposition there may be. All right. Or what type of diligence you gotta give or what protection. You gotta stay up all night. Keep the well unstopped. My God. It doesn't matter if, if it takes a great effort, a little effort, if it takes great time, it doesn't matter. Keep the wells unstopped. My Lord, amen. Well, one of the great focuses of the enemy was to stop up the wells. Mm -hmm. If you get in there, yeah. you may injure them, you may do this, that, and the other, but make sure you stop up the wells. Make sure you cut off their water supply. My God. This, we're talking about tactics of warfare. Yes, sir. All right. This morning we're going to get down into it how whatever it takes, saints, we must keep our wills unstopped. Right. And the enemy, right. the Philistines, is going to do everything in his power, saints, to stop up your will. Right. He's going to try every which way. We're going to detail some things today. But by the grace of God, we don't have to let him stop our wills. Right. 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 The Philistines were ancient people primarily known for their conflict with the Israelites. The Israelites were the descendants of Abraham who were God's chosen people. By many biblical historical accounts, post the exodus of Egypt, the Philistines were the arch enemy, arch enemy, of the people of God. Above all other enemies that they face, the Philistines were their main foe. Israel's most dangerous and persistent enemy until the rise of the Assyrians years later. Samson dealt with the Philistines. Saul dealt with the Philistines. David dealt with the Philistines. The Philistines were people of a five state region. Gaza, Ascalon, Ashdod, Ekron, and Gad. You know that Goliath was a Gad. Yeah. He was a Philistine. They were relentless. They were a relentless foe. Yeah. Saints, do you realize sometimes the devil can be relentless? Yeah. The devil will be relentless. Yeah. He will not stop. Yes. He will just keep coming. He will just keep coming. But thank God, saints, we can be just as relentless as the devil is. Right. Yeah. Oh my God. So here, the foe was the Philistines, and they represented the devil. Our foe. The Philistines wanted to clog up and stop up their wells. And the devil wants to clog up and stop our wells. The wells. Go over to John chapter 4. From a natural perspective, the wells is where 
They would dig deep in the ground at a certain point into their tap into a fountain. And this fountain supplied water, which everything that they did depended upon that water. Everything that they did depended upon the flow of the well. Their nourishment, their food, the energy, their strength for labor, their strength for war, their strength to clean, their strength to properly hygiene themselves, to cook. All of these things depended upon the flow of the well. Oh, we going somewhere this morning. Where are we saying? In John, the fourth chapter, Jesus told us about the New Testament well. Come on and read. John 14, read verse number, sorry, verse number one. John 4, I'm so sorry. John 4, verse number one. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. Okay. He left Judea and parted again into Galilee. Mm -hmm. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Mm -hmm. Now Jacob's and Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, said, Now Thus, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary. Jacob's well was there. These were some diligent people. Through all these years, they kept Jacob's well flowing. Go ahead. Come on and read. Now Jacob's well was there. It's a blessing, saints, to ever be in a, in a place or a part of the people that the well has been flown for many yes, Lord, My God, amen. Despite the devil coming with this, the devil coming with that, this group rising up, that group rising up, the well yet flowing. My God. It's a blessing to be among the people, amen, from one generation to another. They had to value the well. They had to appreciate the well. They had to protect the well. They had to be, my God, be sure that when any enemies came, that they didn't clog up the well. If a little dirt got in the well, they had to get down in that well and get that dirt up, my God. But amen, that well was sustained from one generation to another, amen. Come on and read now Jacob's well was there. Come on. Jesus therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. See, when you're weary, you need a well. My God. Amen. Oh. When you're weary, you don't need no dry place. Amen. Oh. You don't need no dry ground. When you're weary, when you're going through some stuff, you need a well. Amen. That's why our services must be a well. Amen. Oh. When we're going through some, I want to come to church to receive a refreshment. Amen. Oh. I want to come to church to receive something down in my soul. I don't want to hear no dry testimony. I don't want to hear no dry scene. I don't want to hear no dry word. Yesterday's sermon from last week, you just pick up. I need something going through some battles. I need something that'll refresh me, that'll give me courage to keep going. Not to look back, my God. Not to get weary and well doing, so I don't faint in the midst of a battle. Amen. Jesus was weary, and he went to the well. Come on and read. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Come on. Jesus said unto her, Give me the drink. Yes. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Come on. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, uh -huh. How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask his drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? Come on. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Come on and read. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink. I love the fact that Jesus would deal with folk. Everybody would leave alone. Yeah. Hey, amen. Everybody would pray. Everybody would I tell you that. But Jesus, hey, amen. He cares about those that no one else care about. Hey, amen. Thank the Lord. We serve a Christ. We serve a Messiah. We serve a Savior. And don't have popularity contests before he decides to spend some time with you. See, right. some folk, they'll be real cool with you if you're that guy. If you're that woman, my God. But if you don't, if you're not a part of that clan or you don't got that income or you don't have, you used to be a, a, a 
a show many years ago. Uh, uh, it was called uh, Beverly Hills 90210 or something. Everybody from this zip code had a certain car, had a certain house, had a pools and this, that, and the other. Amen. Unless you was from that zip code, you couldn't be really a part of the clan. But thank God Jesus don't care what zip code you're from. Thank the Lord that Jesus don't care. Hey, you go to some churches, my God. If your name is not so and so, so and so, or so and so, then you on the third tier, the second tier. But thank God for the church of God. No respect your person. Hey, come on, I don't care where you, what your family last name is. I don't care if you've been saved for ten years or ten days. Thank God we're all at the same feet of Jesus. Hey, man. Come on, ring. Jesus answered and said unto her, Come on, if thou knewest the gift of God, yes, and who it is. That said to thee, give me the drink. If you only knew who you was talking to. Come on and read. Thou would have asked of him. Yeah. And he would have given thee living water. Yeah. The woman said to him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. And the well is very deep. My Lord, the well is deep. The well is deep this morning. Come on and read. From whence then hast thou that living water? Come on and read. I thought greater than our father Jacob. Oh, he asked a lot of questions. Come on, read. Which gave us us the well? My, 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 greedy. And drank thereof himself. My Lord. Come and on, read. His and his cattle. My Lord. Jesus answered and said unto her. He had a tremendous well. Come on, read. Whosoever drinketh of this water, whosoever drinketh of this water, shall thirst again. Now thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, come on, shall never thirst. My, my, my. But the water that I shall give him, saints of God, I'm encouraged, amen, that when you take a drink from Jesus, well, you'll never thirst again. I remember before I got saved, I thought that I was going to be saved, but miss the world. I thought that I was going to get saved, and my friends in the world, now they were going to pick on me and tell me all the things that I was missing out on. Oh, you missed the part. Oh, you missed this, or you missed that. But I'm thankful that in salvation, not only are you forgiven, not only are you delivered, not only are you regenerated, but there's a well that comes from down within that you don't miss the things you gave up. Amen. There's a well from deep down in you that satisfies you more than any dream you ever took in your life, more than any girl you ever had in your life. Today, I want to encourage you. Shall come. 
a never failing source of strength. My God. Amen. Of power. Yes. Jesus said, when the Spirit shall come, it shall give you power. My God. Amen. A deep satisfaction. A deep joy. In Romans, he spoke about the joy of the Holy Ghost. Okay. Amen. That well represents divine inspiration. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The well was able to feed Jacob, his animals, his flock, his servant. It was able to feed the children of Israel, the Jews, the, 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 the Gentiles, the Samaritans. They all came from this natural well. When that inspiration and that well was flowing, it not only will impact you, but all those around you. When that well is flowing, the influence of that individual, when the Holy Ghost is just down in them and through them and around, you can work with them, you can live with them, you can live by them, and it's just something that will impact. You can get inspiration just from being around them. It's an internal peace. Deep on the inside. It's a divine guidance. Spiritual leading God. We need our wells to be the people of God, to be the church of God. My God. The well was an everlasting fountain that flowed in all, when you had a good well, it flowed in all seasons. Okay. In all weather, right. through the storm, they could still walk down to the well. My God. Through different persecutions, they could go down to the well. Right. My Lord. People don't understand the reason why the famine would come from time to time is because there could be a, a, a river or a stream nearby, and that stream would dry up. So it would hinder productivity. But what they didn't realize was that, oh, Brother Isaac, amen. Oh, Brother, they went, amen. They, 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 they didn't just, just accept the stream that was by, but they took the time to dig a well real deep. My God. They took the time to dig a well real deep. Well, so when the stream drove, dried up and, and it was a famine around, it was a famine all around, but, 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 but old Brother Isaac, he had a deep well on his property in his land that when everybody else was thirsty and dry, parched mouth all around him, he, right at his home, he had in his possession a deep well of refreshing. He could feed his cattle. He could feed his land. He could uh, 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 feed those around him, his servant, so on the circle. Well, see, when you get a well down on the inside, when you really get the Holy Ghost for real, when you really get Holy Ghost inspiration for real, there may be a famine around you, but you're not depending on your surrounding. There's something deep on the inside of you that is cultivating some inspiration, that is cultivating some strength, that is cultivating some joy. You rise above your environment, folk complaining or folk dealing with it. Yes, you may be dealing with the same circumstances. Yes, he was around the same circumstances of the famine. Yes, he experienced, yes, he seen it, but it didn't affect him the same way. My God, my Lord, my Lord. Because he had a way. And his well was deep. His well stayed despite the seasons changing, despite the storms coming, despite famines all around. He could always go down to the well, go down to the well my God. and be refreshed. So here, that well is that Holy Ghost inspiration, that life-giving fountain deep on the inside. Now, the Philistines, as we spoke to you about earlier, were the enemies of the people of God. And they came to stop up the well. What they used to stop up the well was dirt. Go over to Genesis chapter 2. They used earth to stop up the well. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 1. 
verse number 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Jeremiah 22, 29. Keep you. You're well unstopped. 22, 29. O oh, earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. So here Jeremiah speaking to the people. He said, O oh, earth, earth, hear the word of the Lord. Earth, earth, earth represents people. People came from the dust of the earth. They came from the earth. People, our, our fleshy bodies, earth represents flesh. It represents fleshiness. So here, he stopped the wells up with fleshiness. Don't go there over in John chapter 2 verse 16. It spoke about the enemies that we would deal with. And it said, the lust of the flesh. Pride of life. It talked about the thing, and it said, the lust of the flesh. One of our big enemies would be the flesh. The Philistines used the flesh, the earth, to stop the flow of the waves. The enemy would love to use the flesh, fleshiness, the earth, to stop up the waves. It's a war going on. In Galatians 5, don't go there, verse 17, it said, for the flesh, war, the spirit, war against the spirit. We're in a battle. The flesh, warring against the spirit. I don't want to get there ahead of myself, but even the church is individually and the church. The reason why the church loses a certain inspiration, a certain power, fleshiness comes on. It begins to be unchecked, my God. It's the same thing personally. If the enemy can get fleshiness, if he can get uh, fleshy activities, fleshy things, we're going to detail these. We need our wells. The world needs our wells flowing. Our family needs our wells flowing. Six tanks need our wells flowing. Unsaved children need our wells flowing. But the enemy want to come in, my God, and bring fleshiness. My God, my Lord, my Lord. To stop up our wells. But we God. cannot allow to use fleshy things. Over in Peter, don't go there, First Peter 4, 1, he said, he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. The reason why people cannot stop sinning is they don't want to suffer. A cute girl walks by, they want to lust. Somebody don't know, they want to go off on them. Somebody do this, they get that. But my God, if you are going to live a victorious life, yes, you're going to you have to be willing to suffer some things. The reason why people well get stopped up, my God, because they don't want to suffer. Any little thing happens to them, they want to handle it themselves. They want to deal with it. They'll be careful. Your will start getting stopped up. Praise the Lord. Lord God. He said over in Romans, the seriousness of not keeping your wells unstopped. In the 8th chapter, he said, in verse 12, they that live after the flesh shall die. Saints, do you realize the reason why many people end up backsliding? Flesh! Flesh! A little bit at a time. Flesh! Don't pray. Don't handle this. Right. Flesh! Just start packing their wells up. Packing their wells up. Then they don't got the inspiration that they need. They don't have the power that they need. They don't have the joy that they need. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. But if the enemy can begin to fill your well up, you ain't got the joy that you once had. My Lord, my Lord. You ain't got it like you said. You come and you can say, Saints can say, a heaviness is all around. What's going on, my God? I'm going through this. We all going through. Make sure your well is going to get stopped. Oh my God. Amen. 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 Ways that our wells get stopped up. Go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. Keeping our wells unstopped. For though we walk in the flesh, for though we walk in the flesh, 
We do not war after the flesh. Many people's will get stopped up because they get involved in a situation, my God, in which there's a difference between them and somebody else, and they don't have the capacity and the wherewithal to take the time to pray it through. They look for some short answer, some short supply, and they begin to fight their own battle. Saints of God, if you're fighting your own battle, the devil will take a scoop of dirt and throw it right in your will. Another scoop of dirt, throw it in your will. Another scoop of dirt, and throw it in your will. You well. Here you got an issue with this person and that person. The weapons of our warfare are not calm. I'm not, listen, I'm not going to get an attitude with you because you got an attitude with me. It takes two to tangle, my God. That's what turning to the other cheek is about. Turn to the other cheek is that you can go off on me. Go off on me. Jesus said, turn to the other cheek, my God. Give him the other one. This is not an eye for an eye. That's the Old Testament. The New Testament, my God. You can fight me all you want to fight me. You say, what? Y'all don't fight. Yes, we fight, but we fight spiritually, amen. We will pray on your foolishness. We will ask God to pray. We'll turn our plate up. We'll do what we got to do. My God, but we will not fight calmly. We're not going to let our will. Don't you try to stop my will up. You're not going to stop my joy. You're not going to stop my peace. You're not going to stop my inspiration. I need some power. I'm trying to get my family saved. I'm trying to get this community saved. I'm not going to allow some difference, my God, between me and somebody else. Allow the devil to stop my will up. And you best not even. Don't you let them stop your Do to you or do to me. I'm not gonna let them cause me 
need to have a miserable life. Why am I going to be home sad, upset, walking around being muggy, folks, and saying, no, no, the life is too short for that. Yes, I'll have some joy. If you've got a problem with me, that's on you. Now, if I can do anything to help calm it, if I can talk to you or give some communication, because sometimes it's just a failure of communication. True. That's two individuals with the right spirit, True. but they have a different interpretations or misunderstanding. Yeah. With proper communication, that thing can be resolved. Yes, sir. But sometimes, the Bible says, live peace with much life within you, live peaceably with all men. Sometimes, individuals, it's a failure of communication, but they've allowed it to go so deep, they take on a different spirit. That's right. If that has happened, it's not much you're going to be able to say to get them to change their mind towards you. Amen. You want to pray that through. Amen. All right. First Corinthians 9, 27, read. But I keep under my body. Paul said, I keep under my body. And bring it into subjection. And bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means. Lest that by any means. But I have preached to others. Why well, I preach to others. I myself maybe should be a castaway. Now, we crucified the old man. But this flesh, we're going to have to deal with. Paul said, I keep under my body. Some people wealth are stopped up because they don't keep their bodies under. Say it was flowing. They testified. It was a thing. It wasn't what they said. It was just a certain something. It was just something that they could just shake your How you doing, brother? Good to see you. And they just imparted something. But it's gone. Saints, some wear the flesh. Some they should have kept under. Some they should have prayed through. Some type of way the devil had got in. And now, that well. Clogged up. I pray this morning. And we unclock some wells. Amen. Amen. I pray this morning, backslide. If you're struggling with it, I can almost tell you 100% of the time, if someone is struggling or not what they used to be, somewhere, some earth got in their well. Somewhere, some earth got in their well. Don't know it ain't supposed to be like that. We're supposed to go on conquering and to conquer. But here he said, I keep under my body. I'm not going to just keep eating and eating and eating and eating. Greet the Holy Ghost. No. A lot of these health conditions we're dealing with now, we bought on ourselves. Yes, yes, not just how much we eat, but what we eat. Yes, sir. He said, I keep wondering about Listen, man, I'm not you just got to have fried double fried chicken. They got double, double fried. No. I know I'm dealing with some things. My guess, but listen, it may not be as much flavor and juice, but give, 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 give it to me, Greg. You know, I, I got to keep on this. And, no. You know, that, that's ridiculous, man. Right? Eliminate with strawberry and, 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 and double sugar and this. No, 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 no. Yeah. I keep under no. I keep under my body. Many people well have been clogged up because they could not keep under their bodies. They just kept feeding the flesh, kept feeding the flesh, involved in this, stepping across the line, doing this right here, knowing you ain't got no business. How are you going to do that to keep your mind pure? I'm going to leave that alone. Go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Galatians 5, keeping our wells unstopped. Galatians 5, verse 16. For in Jesus Christ, for in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love, but faith which worketh by love. You did run well. He did run well. Who did hinder you? Who did hinder you? That you should not obey the truth. Come on. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth thee. Come on. A little leaven, leaven the whole lump. Come on and read. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. Mm hmm. You read verse 16? Galatians 5. Oh, Galatians 5 16. This I say then. This I say then. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Saints, sometimes individuals will go on to get sanctified. 
But for whatever reason, they'll fail to walk in the spirit. Sanctification shouldn't just give you this shit. I'm sanctified so I can still do and work. We still have to be watchful that we walk in the spirit. Many times individuals' wells end up getting stopped up because although they may be sanctified, they're not walking in the spirit. Spirit didn't lead you to do that. Spirit didn't lead you to say that. Sometimes we're battling things because we didn't ask God's guidance and spiritual decision making. Okay. I can't just make any decision. I'm saying I'm saying I'm set apart. God, what would you have for me to do? Would you have me to involve my I've seen some people, God put his finger on something, they should stop doing. It. Okay. They shouldn't be involved in it anymore. Saints, they pressed past it, and now their wills are dry. God told them, get it up. Give it up. There's no way. First of all, I'm not going to be a rival to nothing. Let that thing go. That thing is a distraction. You don't need that right now. That relationship, let it go. We're not even talking about things that are sinful. These things are just not in the spirit. It's not what God would have for you to do. Individuals will go on, press on anyway. Saints of God, God, did they go get some counsel way over here after the Holy Ghost? Well, that's one of the most dangerous things you can ever yes. do. After God makes something clear to you, you're going to go get counsel from somewhere else to tell you something other than what the Holy Ghost has already made clear. Now, if the Holy Ghost has made it clear, you may get counsel on how to execute it, how to carry it out, but don't renegotiate something. Your well went up, you went up with some earth in your well. Okay. Your well went up, stopped up. What happened to so and so? God told them, let that thing go. That thing takes all your time. Saints, don't you realize what sanctification is? We're to be set apart for God's use. In the tabernacle, whatever was in there, if it was a lamp, if it was a paper of showbread, whatever it was, that stuff you couldn't take to your house and do this. That thing was set apart for the temple. That's for the tabernacle. Well, it's the same way. We set apart. I'm not just going to just, just involve myself in, in some activity in the community and this, that, the other. That's going to take me away from the service. I'm not going to do that. I mean, I mean where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Hold on. The Bible said, uh, 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 seek first the kingdom. So many, so many people, we live in this, this, this lukewarm age, saints, and the evidence of it is people think that they're okay with God when they're prioritizing hobbies and prioritizing extracurricular stuff over the things of God. The Bible is the same as it's always been. If you want to get the results that you've gotten in times past, you want to measure to the same gospel that the brothers of old measure to. We can't come down to the end. I've never seen it. Uh, uh, it's, it's, when, did this surprise, when did service become optional? I've never seen it in my life. You're going to walk, well, what's she doing to walk, what's she doing to You sit, so so I call it, and say, no, I stand for like coming in there. The Bible said, forsaking not the assemblies of it. You ain't careful, your well went up, stop it up. Your well, and then you can get it, well, I am, a, I'm upset at so-and-so. Why is me being upset at so-and-so going to affect me coming to service on time, with some inspiration, with my well overflowing? I always watch that. If I see anybody doing anything, I say, how is your service in this? How's your devotion? How's your devotion? You okay, here you are missing devotions, this and the other, but you ain't never missing that stuff you're doing out there with them. Oh, Lord, God is saying what? You walk into the governor, you giving me this bro, bro one eye, this, that, the other. Don't give it to the governor. You wouldn't give him that type of consecration, but you want to give it to me? Not in my church, you're not. What, with the devil? Earth. Oh, yeah. You ain't going to church now? Earth. And, they went. and then you wonder why you got a lack of victory. Saints of God, you need all the strength that you can muster up, all the strength of the Holy Ghost. You wonder why. You ain't praying in the spirit. There's a little too many stuff you're doing. Why? Because you're so focused on everything else. Involved in stuff God ain't led you to get involved in. Going deeper in the stuff God ain't led you to be that deep in. My God, my God. No need to be spiritual. We're going, why don't you serve? Well, I was studying some stuff. I was working out some stuff. Listen, don't not come because you're working out some stuff. Come early. Amen. Stay late. Go to the prayer room. Come right now. Go to the prayer room. My God, get some of that. The problem is there's some dirt in there. Sure don't, my God. See that dirt when you got to clog up your vision. You can't see clearly. You, be, you, you, you don't understand clearly. My God. my God, you try to make some stuff up. You try to make sense of it all. Don't try to make sense. Just walk in the spirit. Let God lead you. Amen. Amen. Wow. My God. The Bible speaks about the cares of life. Mary and Martha. He said the parable. It said, after a while, words sprung up, durable. It said, earth. Not much earth there. Then it talks about the cares of life. Choke the word. <laughs> Natural life. Things in this world. 
What happened to Sister So and So? You know what? She got so caught up in the cares of life, so caught up in the things of this world. She used to pray, spend time before God. Sister Green said something one time. I was like, "What is she saying?" She said, "You have to pray until you pray." Sister Green, what, what, what book you get that out of? Is that Ian Bounds? Is that Rico? Where, 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 where'd you get that from? That was the Holy Ghost. That was her commentary. Sister the Green commentary. Okay. You don't remember nothing else she said. Remember, she said, pray to you pray. And one time, I'm sitting up here. Lord, I thank you for picking up this morning. I thank you for a blessing. Please, Lord, remember. Okay. And Jesus, I said, I said, whoa. The Bible talks about a phone. I said, hold on. I'm so focused on being here and going there and doing this. That I really ain't spending time. If I, I, I really, I really in the cares of life. I'm, and I'm gonna tell you this. It said when you go into the closet, Jesus told him to pray. He said, "Shut the door." Right. Yes. Why? Because there's so many distractions. Right. There's so many things you're dealing with. There's so many issues and so many things. It's hard to really get in the spirit. The kid, the life, 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 life. The devil said, "Go ahead. Get him involved in this. Go ahead. Go ahead." And they're wondering why. Their children bound by spirits. It's going to take more than just that. Now I'll lay me down. Lord, hold on. I'm getting up. I'm spending some time before God. There's some situations that God want to break. Yes. There's some things that God want to do. Right. But he's saying that there's too much earth in your well. There's too much earth in there. You got to get some of that earth out, my God. Your flow got to be more. Your flow got to be greater. Your flow got to be deeper. I need more access. You need more power than your allowing. Right. Right. My wife, the other day she went and bought it. I thought that all chargers were the same. Okay. So we went and got a charger. One of the chargers fit with the iPad. It fit with the phone. It fit. Well, one of the chargers cost like $19 at Best Buy. Then she was looking at one. It was $49. Same charger. And I'm like, brothers, they relate to this. $49. 19. That's all I see. 49, 19. So I've been trying to be a good church of God, brother, so I'm not going to just, uh, okay, but can you make sense? Can you help me to make sense of this? 49, 19. Are you caught up in the name brand? Because my dad trained me against name brand. I ain't name brand with nothing to me. I don't get what, no, he bought me Nikes, but the Nike side was backwards. <laughs> I went to school, and I'm like, what's going on, man? Look at me and my Nikes. He said, what? Look, they point, I'm like, when they point, my dad got me. <laughs> they point, they point, they point. I said, no, what y'all point? They said, he got on Sykes. <laughs> I went home, I said, dad, you bought me Sykes, right, for Nikes. He said they clean, they keep your feet right, and you're going about your business. I'm not going to just pay some money, $100 for this, that, and the other. I got to put food on the table. I got to do this. I said, praise God, let me go on to school with my sights. <laughs> well, she goes and she says, I said, we dealing with nights and sights? She said, look, read it. So I took the time. Brother, listen to your wife. Take the time. I'm listening, reading. It said, over in the corner, 2.7 hertz or watts or whatever measurement they utilize. It said 2.7. This one over here said something like 75. I said, what's, what's that? She said, you notice when we put this on the charger and you got to leave it there for hours and hours and hours? And the children can't use their, they probably can't do their home because we got a whole bunch of us and we got just a couple of, we need something that's stronger, that can charge it quicker. So now this one can do in 10 minutes what this one can do in an hour and a half. Yep. I said, pick. Why and then I looked it? over and next to that one, there was one for $10 more. I said, babe, why do we get this one? <laughs> Let's get this one right here. <laughs> but say, uh, I need my well completely from my Lord. Say, I got right, some brothers that bound by marijuana. Right. That bound by some spirits. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about brothers that I grew up with in the church okay. and literally. Yeah. I got some sisters I grew up with in the church and literally that's bound by all type of sex spirits. That's bound by I can't have just a little trickling of water coming in my well. I got to make sure that ain't no earth, ain't no situation, ain't nothing in my well. Let me just explain just a few things that are well. That can clog this well up. Sometimes
time the devil will use accusations. All right. You can't receive that mess. You're not saved. You're not clear. You did this. And you end up knowing, I ain't done this. I, you had accepted it. So now you're walking around. What's wrong with you? Up under an accusation spirit. The Bible says the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Lord, I'll go over my experience. Lord, I want to be clear. If there's anything you show me, but I will not allow an accusing spirit to hinder my will. Depression. Anxiety. Your situation ain't going to never change. Nobody cares about you. I can't handle no more of this. Everybody's against me. I was at a meeting the other day with medical officials of the community, and they were projecting on how much money to spend in medical bill in our county. And they said, we're going to show you in the poll that we did, a massive poll that they did in Jackson County, the number one health issue projected in the county in the next five or ten years. I'm thinking cancer, diabetes. I'm thinking number one, depression. It wasn't even close. And I said, well, they said so many of these other issues are really spurred with depression. They can't deal with it. Anxiety attack. The enemy. Go ahead. Be depressed. Don't look like you're about you. Saints overlooking you. Nobody calling you. Some more dirt. My God. Let me go. go. Now you're Joe. What's this? Why you know? I'm all right. <laughs> Not you. I'm just. Uh -huh. What happened here? How, how did you get? There's some well with. There's some dirt. Some dirt in your well. Where'd that come from? I'm just saying this. So I'm also got the same thing. I'm naked here. So I ain't gonna. Whoa. I said, you ain't gonna never check. This is my thumb. What? Many people have missed their blessings. He said, unbelief. Earth in your will. God ain't working no more. <laughs> your condition ain't gonna change. Look what happened to so-and-so. I'm not looking at so-and-so, I'm looking at God's word. Amen. The Bible says his word is better settled in heaven. The promises are yea and amen. The promises is a covenant. Covenant is a relationship. When I got saved, I entered into a covenant. He said, do no part, live holy, live right. Let me lead you. And I'll do my part. I got promises for every situation. He that begun a good work, I'm the Lord God that healed me. I will supply all your needs, but we don't have to want for nothing. Why? Because I have faith, bitterness. Pray for me, saints, as we close. Yes, sir. Bitterness, saints. I was so heavy with this burden, this message. I said, Lord, there's so many needs all around us. And I know you're ready to work. You are working. I said, but well, Lord, how do we even get more inspiration individually and collectively? And he was so clear. You better make sure they had no dirt in their wells. My God. Bitterness. Someone do you wrong. What is it? Someone does you wrong. Oh, let me read the definition. Bitterness is a deep disappointment resulting from being treated unfairly in a prior situation. Someone does you wrong and you let it go too deep. Say, let's clear some bitterness out. Amen. Well, Amen. It results in a sharpness of attitude towards an individual. Bitter is a lack of sweetness. Kindness. Like some say bitter, that's bitter. It's a lack of sweetness. Some people, because of something that happened between them years ago, saints right now in this room, no doubt. Yes. Bitterness. They have a sharpness towards the individual. Bitter. There's a lack of sweetness towards them. If they're in a room in which that person comes, their whole confidence changes. Mm -hmm. It's real. If their name is brought up, if that person's name is brought up, this, this was six months ago. He said, brother, you don't know what they did. I'm not discussing what they did. Bitterness is what you did about what they did. Right. 
Yeah. You can't let it go that deep. Yeah. You can't let it fester that, that, that deep. My God. Well, that inspiration that they had, that joy, they forcing testimonies now. This is that the other. Now why? Some bitterness got in. Mm. Some bitterness got in their way. Said unforgiveness. Unwilling or unable to forgive an individual. Oh God. To forgive meant, means to pardon, to cancel a debt, to exonerate or let go for a prior offense, to stop holding. Some people's well that was on fire right. with a divine inspiration. Dirt, earth, unforgiveness. Yes. Deep down inside of them. Deep and God can't use them like they want to. There's some situations they need God to come through for, he's hindered. I'm saying, Lord, what is it? Why? More inspiration. More power. Hatred. A deep, intense dislike. To detest. I hate you. Uh, to possess an extreme aversion or hostility. Is there anybody that you hostile towards? Serious? Well, brother, you don't know what they... Listen, the Bible said where sin abounds does grace much more about Thank God I was thinking this early this morning. We don't serve a God that's just a figment of our mind. He went through exactly what we went through. So he knows the grace that we need in each situation. An extreme emotional dislike directed at an individual group, hatred. Talking about people. Evil surmises. This will fill your well up, I'm telling you. Gossip. I don't talk or sharing rumors about another person's private affairs. Well, we're talking about inspiration. Take it out. Oh, right. Praise God. People can sense a certain Holy Ghost there. Yeah. God is able. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. Yeah. I'm looking for somebody I want to work mightily. Unstop the well. David, when he messed up, he should have left the city protected when he went to war. But he didn't. They came back. All their valuables were Their children, the long one, all of them take it. The men said, we're about to stone you. Yeah. David went before God. I messed up. First of all, David encouraged himself. Yeah. And says, you know what? It takes some courage, saints, to redig your weapons. Yeah. It takes some courage, my God, to redig your weapons. Yeah. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Yeah. David got before the Lord for himself. Yeah. Said, I'm going to depend on so and so and so. Before God for myself, He encouraged Himself in the Lord. Then He said, "Go and recover all." Yeah. Saints, when you come back, don't just settle for a sprinkle. Don't just settle for a little bit of water coming back through. For a little touch of the Holy Ghost, I'm forgiven. Saints, I feel safe. Don't settle. He said, go and recover all. Oh. Go redid everything, every bit of will you had before. Every bit of inspiration you had before. It's a sad thing to see individuals that used to have this well that just flowed all over you. They backslide, have a setback, something happens. And they're a fraction of what they used to be. But David went, he said, they were throwing a party. Some, some, some demons this morning are throwing a party because your well ain't what it used to be. Yeah. They were throwing a party. They even walked up on it. See what y'all doing up in here? Hold on, y'all throwing a party because y'all took the stuff that belonged to me. My joy, my peace, my You took my strength. You took my stuff. They didn't went from morning to night. Went upside. Give me back my stuff. Give me back every bit. Give me all. Give me my stuff. I want all my prayer life back. I want my joy back. Give me my peace back. Give me my love Give me my heart Give me my victory back. I'm not saying for someone. He didn't just go get his wife. He said, give me all of them. Give me all of my children. Don't just set up with one child. Give me all of my children. Everything you took from me, devil. I want it all back. I want my will to flow like it used to flow. I want to experience God in the morning. I want to experience God at the midnight hour. I don't want to just be 
be a bitch with Mercedes. I don't want to be a bitch with an accusation. Gotta sit my seat. No, I want back what I had before. David went to this stuff here. After he got all this stuff, yeah. he went back and he said, now give me y'all stuff. Hey! Hold on, hold on. Before I even got it, I, had, uh, I didn't have this level of fast life. I want that level of fast life. Yeah, I want that level of power. I want that, I want that. Oh, I didn't have this deal before. Give me this deal and that deal. Give me back more than I had before. Oh, Unstopping the will. We got to keep our wills unstopped. The Bible spoke about, he said that, uh, uh, lay aside every sin. That so easily beset us. And every way, that dirt in there will weigh us down. Those things in our spirit will weigh us down. But here he said, lay aside. Get this shovel. Let me get this shovel. I bought a shovel this morning. I bought a shovel this morning. Somebody use a shovel, my God. Amen. Amen. Start shoveling some stuff. My God, I'm letting this go. I'm forgiving this person. I might have to get this prayer back. I want my victory right now. I want my joy right now.
And you can search for peace. And as the brother brought up this morning, depression and anxiety rampant in the land today. You can search in pills and people and all kinds of places. But you will not find it in anything aside from finding that which satisfies the soul. See, that, that woman at the well, she had tried to find enjoyment in life in five different husbands. And no doubt she was spent. She was spent when she came to the well that day. Amen. Some of you come to the service this morning spent. The devil has done a work on you. Sin's done a number on you. But this morning, Jesus is here. That woman met Jesus at the well one day. He said, I have some living water. But you're going to have to get some things out of the way. And she was completely honest with him. She was completely honest with God. If you were completely honest with God this morning, if you were 100% honest with God this morning, you'd have to admit it. I don't have the peace. I don't have the joy in life. I'm seeking it. I'm trying to find it in one solution after another, in one remedy after another, but it's not there. And the faithfulness of God was here this morning. Will you come? Would you come? You may never have it like this again. You may not have a moment like this again. God may never deal with you the same way as He's dealing with you this morning. Ever again. You don't say that to scary, to frighten you. It's the reality of the situation this morning. It's the reality of the situation this morning. Some people have come into services now hoping, hoping that God will inspire them again. Hoping that they can feel conviction and one more time. If you feel it this morning, you're blessed. You're blessed. But you need to take advantage of it. Yes, sir. While it's still off. We're going to sing another verse. If you desire something from God this morning, it's here for you. We have an altar. We have a prayer room. Shall we sing? God bless. Watch and pray every day.
But Father, we know that, dear God, that the devil is a liar. And Father God, if you say that well will flow, it will surely flow again. We're putting unrelenting faith in thee. So Father, we pray that this morning you would clear the pathway for some precious soul to break free this morning. Father, we pray, dear God, you would restore. Father, that you would not only give back that which was lost, but give back abundantly, more than we ever had, dear Father. Dear God, we pray that this morning, dear Lord, that this message would follow us. And by God, may we all endeavor, dear Father, to not let anything clog our wells. And dear Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We love you. We appreciate you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be 